In this video, we're going to talk about how to track your advertising. By the end of this video, you're going to understand first what your objectives should be on your marketing and then how to track them, whether it's in the specific app or platform that you're using or it's going to be inside of uh, Google Analytics. So you'll be able to decide, should I be using Google Analytics or should I be using Facebook reporting or Google AdWords reporting? And at the end of this video, you're going to understand how to track your advertising. We're also going to do a walkthrough of Google Tag Manager, which is a great tool for implementing your pixels and tracking data. Hi there, everybody. My name is Brandon Brashears, and I create daily marketing videos here. If you are looking to grow your business with digital marketing, and if you're trying to get ideas and you would like to find out about tutorials and all kinds of strategies that you can use to grow your business, please consider subscribing to this video. I create other marketing videos and talk about all things digital marketing. So if you're looking to grow your business, then this is a great channel for you. Please consider subscribing. So when we're talking about tracking, first we have to understand what our objective is. And if you don't know what your objective is, then you're not going to be successful in creating advertising campaigns that you can track. So I've created videos if you click here in the corner or if you click in the description, I have videos of the funnel. And the funnel is important because you have awareness, evaluation, and conversion. So somebody has to know about you before they can decide whether or not they want to work with you. Once they decide they want to work with you, they've converted. So each one of those steps is part of a marketing funnel. And I would dive deep into those. Definitely go back and, and watch those videos for sure if you haven't already. But it's important that you know what your objective is. Are you trying to get more likes on pages? Are you trying to get more shares or comments or clicks or traffic to your website? Those are awareness type goals. Those are going to be measured in different areas. If you have evaluation, um, are you signing up people for newsletters? Are people um, requesting free guides? Are they downloading resources? Are they attending webinars? Things like that. That's the middle of the funnel. And that's going to be determining where you're tracking those people as well. And then finally, we have conversions. Where we're talking about return on investment. And we're talking about measured um, revenue. So that's the bottom of the funnel. Now, a lot of times people will say, hey, marketing doesn't work for me. Digital marketing doesn't work. Facebook ads don't work or you know whatever and the reason that they say that is because they're not measuring the right objectives if they're doing content marketing that's awareness type marketing then the objectives are going to be very different here so make sure that you know exactly what the end goal is are you trying to get more people to view your content so that you can create remarketing lists are you trying to just get more likes or shares or comments because that's going to be the number one thing that determines how you measure this so first off we have the objective. Now let's just say for the sake of simplicity here that we're going to be talking about actual return on investment, return on ad spend. We're going to need to have a few things installed. We'll need to have a pixel depending on the, the platform that we're doing. Let's just say we're going to use Facebook. We're sending traffic to a Shopify site which is a very simple website and then we have a, a pixel installed that will fire and track. So Based on the description that I'm talking about right now, we're going to be measuring traffic from Facebook. It's going to go into Shopify. People will make a purchase and then we'll measure the revenue there. If we set up our, our pixel correctly, and a pixel is a piece of code that you put on web pages, and what it does is it tracks the user activity on that browser. So assuming that we have a pixel set up, an ad manager set up, we're going to be able to track this activity. Now, depending on how you want to track this and the kind of information that you're looking to get out of this campaign, you're either going to have to decide, are we going to track it in Google Analytics? Are we going to track it in Facebook AdWord or Facebook Ads Manager? Or are we going to track it in AdWords? Or where are you running the ads? Typically, if I'm running ads, I like to have the ad reporting be done in the ad platform itself. So if I'm running Facebook ads and I'm trying to drive ROI, I'm going to be looking into Facebook ads and the ads reporting to tell me what the cost per sale was there. And if I'm just driving organic traffic or something like that, I'm going to be using Google Analytics. Now, with Google Analytics, you have a tracking code that you put on your website. And all of these different ad platforms have tracking codes. You're going to want to add tracking codes. Now, one thing that is very, very helpful is an invention that Google came out with called Tag Manager. A way to think of Tag Manager is it's a container that you install on your website. And within that container, once it's set up, you don't have to go back and code anything in. You install that container one time, it's there, and then you can input pixels into it. You can set up rule-based um, firing guides that say, 
I only want it to fire on this specific web page, or I only want this pixel to fire on this page only if they have not reached this page. So you can get very detail oriented about how your pixels are firing, which means when they're running, so that you're building very specific lists of people. I'll give you a few examples here. You can build lists of people that are adding products to cart, but aren't completing the checkout. You can add lists of people that are just reaching checkout pages. So those are people who are paying you and making money for your business. And what this lets us do is create rules, <clears throat> is create rules that then make the pixel fire based on the page. And this is important because we only want to have the purchase complete pixel firing when they get to the confirmation page in your cart. Now, a lot of systems like Shopify, for example, have it where you just install the pixel, your, your pixel ID into the web page, but it's going to depend on your specific um, platform that you're using. In the comment the description down below, I'm going to link the, the tutorials on how to do each one of those things. Again, if you don't know or not sure, please comment below and, and let me know. I will actually make a custom video for you showing you how to do that. So just comment below if you need help with that. I'm happy to help. And um, so again, tracking your advertising, it doesn't have to be complicated. I actually like to make it as simple as possible. So it gets complicated typically when you have multiple traffic sources and multiple ad platforms running traffic to the same pages and things. So I would say whenever you're creating new campaigns, you're going to want to make sure to make it as simple as possible. So let's jump into the computer here. I'm going to show you how to install Google Tag Manager into a WordPress site. I'm going to show you how to find your Facebook pixel. And also I'm going to show you how to fix now set up your Google AdWords conversion tracking. I think that it's very, very important that you're installing all of these tracking pixels individually, depending on the ad platform that you're doing. So making sure that you, if you are doing Google AdWords, you need to have Google conversion pixels um, from AdWords. If you're doing Facebook tracking or Facebook ads, you need to have Facebook tracking installed. So wherever it is that you're spending money and driving traffic, it needs to have the pixels installed, okay? I think that's very, very important. It's oh, You can set up Google Analytics to give you reporting based on traffic sources and things, but I think that you get better data and you're able to make better decisions when you're looking at that data inside of the ad platform itself, especially when you're doing optimization and additional type um, work on ads in the future. It's very important that you have all of that data inside of the specific ad platform. All right, let's jump into the computer here and I'm going to start running through a few things. So we're going to be measuring and monitoring your different activities on your ad platforms as well as in Google Analytics. And so we need to first connect Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager. And we do that here with a plugin. I'm going to be showing you specifically on WordPress. If you have Shopify or Wix or different installation, then you can change it. But um, you're going to have different process here. But for WordPress, I suggest using a plugin um, unless you know how to code it yourself and add the tag manager into the head section of all of the pages in your theme um, and I know that there's going to be coders who say you should use that instead it loads faster and things um, but it for me I'm not a coder I don't know how to code I know how to do digital marketing and so um, anyways I wanted to just mention that so once it's activated and installed we're going to go to settings here and then we're going to input our Tag Manager ID. So you're going to need to go into Google Tag Manager, and it's important that you keep all of your um, all of your web properties under the same specific email address. So if you have an email address that is for your AdWords, it needs to be the same as for your Tag Manager. A new account that I create, or did I create? I created this one here. So we have the container ID for this installation here. I'm going to take this container ID and we're going to put it here. So now that we have Google uh, Tag Manager installed, again, this is like the container that we have now installed on each one of our web pages. We're going to do Google Analytics on here and, and other things as well. So we need to go to Google Analytics. And um, I'm, again, it's important that you're in the same email so i was in the wrong one you need to make sure that you're using the email that you use with your specific 
AdWords account because then you have everything that works works well together. So we're gonna go to admin again. And then create another account. And then typically I just name it the site name. And now we're going to enable this tracking code inside of Google Tag Manager. So we have our analytics account set up, but we need the tracking code to be present. So we're gonna add the tracking code to all of the pages. If you have a subdomain or something that you wanna add an additional tracking code, you can also do that. And um, many ways, we have preset tags in here. We're gonna track page views. Here you can track events too. So if you want additional additional data, but for specifically setting up our Google Analytics, we want to have it set so that every single page view will work. We wanna do also one per event. Um, we don't wanna be double tracking page views and things like that. So it's important that you just leave all of these other settings like that. And then we hit save. And this is the tag name. Now what's cool about this is that if you have multiple people on your team or if you have a web developer or something, if they create something, they can say what date it was installed and the installation and, and just all of the data that you're gonna have with that. So use your naming convention to make it clear as what's, what's being updated. If you wanna take anything back or take something away, you can do that by taking and understanding what was changed. So we need to add our tracking ID in there, by the way. So the ID is right here. It's the number that has a UA in front of it. So I named it so that I'll know what it is if I ever need to do a diff additional tracking IDs. So now that we have that, we need to publish this container. And so again, we have we have this container set on, on there. Now we need to just publish it and change it. So now we're going to call it Google Analytics tracking ID and hit publish. So now we have this tag working. There's a Chrome extension that's called Tag Helper and you can get that, uh, that's Pixel Helper, but the Tag Manager Helper is right here. It's Google Tag Assistant is technically what it's called. So if you go to your web page and see, you can see what is being published. So we can see here that we have Google Analytics tag and we have Google Tags Manager, both set up and working. And now too, when we go here to the properties, of the page, we should look at real time overview and we should see a visitor and we have one and it's me. So that's working and now we have this confirmed here, which is great. So now that we have analytics installed properly, we have Google Tag Manager installed properly, we should install our specific conversion pixels. So we need to first know what the end goal is. So we have to have a very specific web page typically is the easiest way to do it. So we have somebody that comes to a landing page and they're on the landing page, they take an, an action and then they get thrown onto the conversion page, which says, thanks for signing up. Thanks for registering. That's the simplest way to do it. And if you're doing that, or if you're selling, um, it's great to have set up goals and things um, with that in mind. So I'm gonna give you some examples here and we're gonna go through this. So with Google Tag Manager, we have, I'm in my AdWords account right now. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna create a conversion event. 
So we go to tools here. I'm in Ad AdWords right now. And if I'm running traffic on AdWords, I want to be measuring events inside of AdWords. If you set up your events on analytics, that's good. And it's great to have that info in there. But having it set up inside of Google AdWords is important because you get to see view through conversions and things like that. So we're going to add tracking sales on website. And we're going to do a purchase event. And we will call it a product purchase. So we have different events here, though. We can do purchases, leads, page views, signups, or others. And I think that it's important to have as much conversion data as possible because you're able to create retargeting data out of this. And so just as much as possible, set this up. So typically, I leave the conversion window at 30 days, um, view through conversions one day. That means if they saw an ad on the display network and they, they saw it, it would give attribution to that display ad but it wouldn't necessarily like if they saw it, but they didn't take action and then they came back and they saw it again, right? Having multiple points, especially if you're doing um, complex campaigns, it lets you figure out where the conversion came from. And last click attribution is, is fine. So with this, I'm not going to use a conversion value because it's going to be an actual purchase. So the data from the URL will pass through the conversion value. So we set up the tag. We're going to use Google Tag Manager. And it gives us conversion IDs and conversion labels. All right, so I'm going to walk you through here like what the flow is of a purchase conversion event. OK, so let's say I'm on my page, Maverick Digital Marketing. I have this shirt. We're going to add product to cart. I'm going to click Add to Cart. Now, there's a few things that we want to think about here. So if we have the view cart method right here, then what we're going to do is it would be great to put a targeting pixel for cart views and cart abandon. So people that reached this page, but didn't reach the end, but we'll do that later on another video. So here we're going to check out, proceed to check out. And I will fill this in here. Okay, so we have the test address and test statement. I've got my WooCommerce in test mode right now. So put this in. And so right here, we want this order received button. So let's check out order received. Every time we hit this URL right here, we're going to be um, getting an order. So this is the confirmation that they hit. So at this page, we're going to add a specific pixel. Okay. So heading back over to Tag Manager, we're going to do a page view. And we're only going to do some page views. And we want the page URL contains this, which is our checkout page. And then we're going to hit save. And we're going to call it Maverick Digital Marketing Checkout Page. So we're going to take this data we're going to put from AdWords into our specific con conversion tracking ID. So if we use Tag Manager, we have the conversion ID. We have the conversion label. We're going to use page URL as the conversion value. The order ID will come from the page URL. And then page URL will also do currency code. And then we'll hit save. We're going to add a trigger. 
and we only want this to happen on the checkout page. So we'll save that and we'll call it conversions add tracking. Now we need to have the conversion link tracker working on here. So we're going to have that filing on all pages. We're going to submit that and call this Google ads conversion tracking. Now that we have that set up, we also need a conversion linker to work out. So we're going to add a conversion linker here as well. So we're going to use a conversion linker. We're going to use our page URL. And our trigger will be all pages. Oops. That's the wrong one. So we need to do all pages and then hit save. And we need to submit that as well. The last thing that we need to do now is add our Facebook pixels and make sure that it's firing on all pages as well. So let's do that. So once you're inside of Business Manager or Ads Manager, so we copy and paste the pixel code to all pages. And we're going to put this pixel tracking on all pages inside of our container now. So we go back to Workplace. And then we're going to add a new tag. And it's going to be instead, it's going to be custom HTML because we don't have um, integration with Facebook directly through Tag Manager because it's different products. So this one is all pages. It's the base code. It's going to be triggered on all pages here. And then we're going to hit save. And then we're going to submit and publish that to you. So once that's installed, now we want to check and having the fix Facebook pixel helper is very helpful to have that set up. So now we're able to test in real time and see. So we have the overview of the pixel there and then we can see the test events and we can see what's going on by opening up the website in different screens here. We can make sure that it's running and working. We have the pixel helper that's registering the pixel. We have microdata detected, which is cool. We're able to tell which pages are working and everything is working properly. So that's great. So what do we do from here? Depending on what you're doing, you're going to be measuring again, activity inside of the specific platform. Now I use tools like Ad Espresso because I create lots of ads and Based on what you're doing, now you're going to set your end goal. You're going to set the objective and you're going to measure success based on that objective. I want to remind you that if you're doing awareness marketing, evaluation marketing, or conversion marketing, your objectives are going to be different. And it's important to figure out first what the end goal is and then the best way to get them to that. And I'll show you some examples here really quickly. So once you have it set up properly with your pixel firing on your confirmation page, and you're able to track all of the data points across these campaigns. And so here we have how much we spent. This is inside of Facebook. We have what our cost per views were, what our cost per clicks were, or how many clicks we received, how many goals we, we did. And so when we create the campaigns inside of Facebook, we're creating with the optimization for standard event of purchase. It tells us how much the revenue was made from this campaign as main revenue. And it tells us what our ROI is based on the actual ad spend and how much money we've made. So again, here we are tracking inside of Facebook because we're driving traffic from Facebook. If it was AdWords, we would be doing AdWords reporting because again, we're trying to figure out what the return on ad spend is. You can put all of these inside of Google Analytics, but I think that it's definitely beneficial to have the reporting that you're doing based on the platform that it's coming from. I hope that this makes sense. If you need any help, please comment below. Happy to help and happy to answer questions. I know this can be confusing. So 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Please consider subscribing. I'm definitely going to be doing more deep dive videos into Google Analytics, how to set up goals in Google Analytics, and things like that. But this is how you're going to track your advertising in general. Don't make it complicated. It doesn't have to be. It can be as simple as you want it to be. So let me know if you have any questions, and talk soon.